Our community was one of the hardest hit by COVID-19 in the Greater Toronto Region, in Ontario, and probably within Canada as well. So I went to my family doctor just to uh, check it out, and she said, yeah, you probably have um, your asthma is acting up, so I'm going to give you some uh, antibiotics. I was on that for three days before I noticed it still wasn't getting better. I went to the eMERGE. Mr. Passarelli had come into actually a peripheral hospital in Orangeville with uh, difficulty breathing uh, and there was a concern that he had um, potentially had COVID-19 related pneumonia because of his breathing failure and uh, because we have expertise in managing patients that are on ventilators at our hospital he was transferred to us. I just remember lying down on the stretcher in the emergency room and that's all I remember. He was um, having you know severe respiratory failure. He was on the ventilator and requiring very high support from the ventilator and high amounts of oxygen. He is a cancer survivor of thyroid and he had pancreatic. So when I hear something like COVID-19, it really like, it scared us. And at the, how quick it escalated for him, it scared us even more. They basically said to me, be prepared. He's a very, very sick man and that he may not make it through the night. At a certain point, we were without further options really from our own perspective that we could offer. We phoned down to the Toronto General Hospital, which has ex expertise in something called ECMO, which is extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, which is a very advanced critical care life support system that essentially is an artificial lung. It's quite miraculous that he ended up going on that therapy for quite some time and, and managed to uh, pull through. I wasn't um, sure where I was, but um, I knew I was in the hospital and that um, when I found out it, I'd been there for a month, I was really um, shocked. The entire team, every shift, whether it was day or night, they were the only communication. They were his family. They were all amazing. They tell me all the time that they love me and, and stuff, so it was nothing new. But just, um, I don't know. We've had lots of tragedy around COVID-19 and, and it's been extremely difficult for families to have people not make it and to lose loved ones. Um, and so we've had to endure through a lot of that um, as a healthcare team as well. And seeing somebody do well and knowing that you've had a, even a small role to play um, is uh, really inspirational. You're someone who is extremely ill, who with his family support and with a lot of concerted effort, made it through something that maybe even three years ago in a system that was less ready to respond may have not ended up in, in such a, a positive manner. Particularly in the intensive care unit, we, we have an environment where we rely on state-of-the-art technology to provide excellent care. And we know that the care we provide here at William Mosler is excellent. And we've had the opportunity to start working here in a new intensive care unit, which has made an unbelievable difference to our ability to provide what we really feel is high-quality critical care for our patients. And we all know that the contributions that uh, donors have made to funding, building our new ICU and to providing funding for the equipment that we rely on every day has made an, uh, an incredible difference. I'm still having lung issues, still having trouble breathing. I'm on oxygen 24-7. Every nurse and every doctor there was actually risking their lives to take care of my loved one. It does escalate so fast um, and it could change your life in just a snap and forever. If it wasn't for the doctors and the nurses making those uh, difficult calls, uh, I wouldn't be here.